Casey. I'm from Derry or London Derry, and originally from Donegal on the other side of the border, northwest region, peripheral northwest region, with a low wage ba low wage based economy, and lots of issues on Brexit, lots of issues with uh, joblessness, and lots of issues with um, economic unemployed, and lots of issues with child poverty, one in three child poverty, and lots of issues with health and suicides jumping off the bridge. And so um, in my city, they've decided that a great project would be reeds across the bridge to stop people jumping off the bridge, as opposed to a project that I have people from the university and others working on, which actually, um, I'm very humbled to be here today because uh, the presentations that have been given uh, already highlight the need for welcoming newcomers into our city and into our Northern Ireland uh, region, which is coming out of poverty, which is coming out of trouble, which is coming out of conflict. And these new people come in and from conflict and oh my goodness, they've jumped into the middle of it because they're strangers in what is a post-conflict society. Um, the uh, statistical data that I uh, researched back in 2009-2010 being on a regeneration process was that there was a, a, a particular problem with uh, poverty and uh, lack of education and therefore to welcome new people coming into any region that has, low po that has high poverty, low education qualifications is looking for trouble. Uh, and so we have to be welcoming and we have to understand the issues in a post-conflict society and bringing in the technology and the fun, interactive, engaging technology into an Amelia Earhart steam zone. Why Amelia Earhart? Well, she was a woman. She flew on her own across the Atlantic in 1932 and landed in a field in Ballyarnett outside Derry, Londonderry, on the border with Donegal. And in 2009, I wanted to help a long-time campaigner do something on Amelia Earhart. So I ran Kentucky and I got the Amelia Earhart Board of Directors to come here. And the something that I had in mind was an Amelia Earhart Northwest Shared Education Children's Science Centre. Simple. Places where children learn through play, exploration in environments designed just for them creating positive links, not in a refugee camp, but actually out of the refugee camp in the host society. Due to the interactive nature of children's museums, most families can participate in exhibits. So if you've got a population in a city of high unemployment that are economic non-contributors, that are on disability living allowance, on unemployment benefit, it makes sense that they come into the centre with wee Johnny and wee Jill and they help their wee child to learn, but they don't realise they're learning themselves. It's a children's science centre. They will help their children to learn and they will work in teams and you'll have the green, the orange, the black and the, and the, and the yellow all working together. And guess what? We're friends because we're working on projects that give us fun, interactive play. The benefits to children's science centres worldwide, and the first one was established in 1942, where? Hands up. Come on, hands up. Where was the first children's science centre established? Florida. And then after World War II, after the Pearl Harbor disaster, they introduced technology. And so, it inspires people to be creative and to share, and it actually contributes to the economy. So if you have an area which has high unemployment, has low visitor numbers, has a, a welcome on the map, but actually needs the investment and in infrastructure and everything else that I have been involved in too, by the way, helping to save the intercity rail connection in 2001 from closure. At a time when school budgets are being slashed, and it's in the newspapers by 10% in the last five years, where we're going to have austerity, Brexit, etc. Many parents are looking for ways to give their children an extra dose of the arts and sciences outside the classroom. And that is not throwing stones at each other. It is not wiping the wing, like, wing mirrors off cars. It's not um, uh, injecting needles into their arms. Um, and getting high on drugs and heroin or dealing it. 
It is taking them in through dependable destinations, offering hands-on activities, experiments, fun, and fun activities, but actually it's brain and knowledge development and acquisition skills. 2.8 mil million children participated in educational se sessions at national museums. They're linked with universities. Museums get st staff seconded into them. The children come into the museums, community centers come into the museums, and they're getting the hands-on university knowledge through the games. And if they are in contents, contested spaces, which is especially in Northern Ireland, where you've got peace walls and you've got segregated communities, segregated schools, segregated everything, as you have in other countries coming out of conflict, these are beacons of hope. These are where you break down the contested spaces and it is our space, it is our children's youth quarter. And it doesn't matter whether you're one side or the other side or upside down or anything else. So in 2007, Queen's University started the sharing education program. And in 2014, it came across to the Northwest and to Derry, Londonderry and we had 1,100 odd children participating in different schools and it was a five-year funded project. Five-year funded project. It went on the continuum of sharing, peace education sharing. It went up to the middle. However, at the present point in time in the Northwest region, which is a peripheral region where we don't get any investment in dual carriageways, motorways, airports, higher education, anything like you do here in this flourishing economic hub, which is Belfast. Our younger population, 33% under 24, and the Northern Ireland average is 32, and the Northern Ireland average is based in Belfast. More children in child protection register, high youth population that self-harm, 230 suicide incidents in 2016, teenage births 13%, one in 10 children regular smokers, 25% drunk. Education qualification zero is 23% compared with 21 Northern Ireland average. Claimant level 4.7 compared with 2.4. Get real. Children in Jordan have the opportunity to go to the Children's Museum, which serves children, families and schools, and it brings in all of the schools on a regular program to upskill and enhance and actually promote optimism and promote happiness. Because on a level of happiness that has not yet been determined in the city that I come from, coming out of conflict with the head down and the ripple effect that was discussed earlier in, a regular, in, a, in an earlier presentation in relation to the uh, effects of um, war and societies and murder and bombing and mayhem take, isn't, isn't gone when the bullets stop. The first museum created expressly for children was founded in 1899. Now, if we go to all of these areas here where children's museums and shared education institutes have been set up, it is because children matter and the focus for our society has to be investing in children and all of the different initiatives coming down from the Department of Communities, the Department of Health and everything else has to be focused on the child but focus on the child in a shared education, learning, Northwest, Amelia, Earhart, STEAM zone, brings in all the community arts, all of the education institutes, all of the volunteer organizations, fun and interactive, engaging participants that contribute to the programming, the step up program in the university, the Seagate technology, science shops in the university, Seagate Technology Summer Camps, the Princess Trust, 
need you name them, the, the ingredients are all there. All we have to do is build it and they will come. Thank you.